it's officially time to start this day. What should we start on first? The engine or the heads? I think I'm gonna start on the engine. I love those automatic lights. I'm so stoked that these finally came in. I've been waiting way too long. What has it been, like four weeks that I've been waiting on this one part? Just goes to show you don't mess up your originals because it's a pain to get some new ones coming. These were 40 bucks and it took four weeks to, to get shipped here and it was just a stupid mistake of not taking my time and checking things out. So take your time, it's worth it. Always test. We learned this the last time. You're not going to be able to see it. So it's not quite perfect. So we'll adjust the machine now before we go on to our final one and test it again. Here we go. So you can see it did get a little bit dirty on the inside of here, but we'll just clean it out. These ones sealed up everything, so they'll seal pretty good, but this one is the one that I'm worried about because it has a hole all the way down into the crank, but luckily we can come through and clean out all the stuff from underneath. Looks like we're starting out at 15 thousandths of gap. Now we're at 17, now we're at 21, getting closer. So now that I've got this ring gap at 21 thousandths, I'm gonna take my time now to make sure that my gap, when I cut, put the ring together, that the two sides match perfectly. You wanna have this so there's no blow by, because if you have one side that's tapered more than the other, well now your ring gap is a lot bigger than what it should be. If they're perfectly flat and straight and no tapered corners, then your rings are gonna seat a lot better, hold a lot more power, and not um, buckle as much, because you don't have that little bit of gap. And then the more gap, the more blow-by. So you're trying to minimize all the blow-by, take the time, and make sure that they're perfectly the same, so that when it goes together, it's gonna be the best that it can be. Taking our time really helped out because now we're right at 23 and that's right where I want to be. And it's nice and um, even pressure going all the way into the gap. So it's not too, it's not tapered on one side more than the other. Here's 22. Then we'll just slide up and down on it. So I never really talked about it, but when I was using my grinder, or the Dremel, uh, to grind these rings down, what I used was a soapstone. You can see that it's not quite perfect, but it was enough to get it done so it hit more on one side than on the other. But I used this soapstone because it actually had some depth to it that would hold, the, um, hold some pressure back when I put some pressure from the ring. I tried using some sanding discs and they're just too thin and they're flexing too much, too much, not giving me a good enough edge. So the mass behind it or the, the thickness behind that soapstone gave me enough to put a little bit of pressure on it and not bend the blade too much. These are more for cutting, that one was more for sanding on. So I went through and used that. It took me a couple tries. I learned on the um, old set that I couldn't be using it that way. So that's what I used for using to grind it, and then what I used to flatten or make sure there wasn't any burrs was to take a small uh, file, this is a jeweler's file, and go to each one of the edges that I 
went and ground down. Now you want to be very, very careful not to have burrs, but you want to be very careful not to take too much off because if you take too much off, that'll be more blow by and effectively it'll be a bigger gap than what you actually have. So I'm going to take it real easy and just deburr this edge and then we'll put this ring pack on the piston, the piston into the uh, block. Well, a surefire way to get you a little upset is to forget to install one of the uh, pins that hold the wrist pin in, or the clips that hold the wrist pin in. Completely forgot to install the inside clip to hold the wrist pin in, went to put the wrist pin in, and it slid all the way to the other side, and I had an aw crap moment. So, went and fixed that. Actually had to take the engine off the stand to actually get to it because it's behind this clip back here. So, I didn't do a good job of filming because I was a little upset about it. But anyways, we got it all done. We got the clip in, the pistons, number four, sitting in there. So now we've got all four pistons in, wrist pin, and I even put this back plate on. Put some silicone around it, uh, waiting for it to dry a little bit, and then I'll tighten it down. But So this whole short block should be assembled and ready to go. Now it's time to work on the heads. Now that that's all done, I'm going to call it and take it easy for the rest of the night. So I'll catch you guys in the next video and uh, hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Take her easy. Peace.